In this lesson, we're going to talk about platelets and how they play a role in your patient's ability to clot. The normal values for platelets are 100,000 to 400,000 cells per microliter. Anything less than 100,000 cells is considered to be a condition called thrombocytopenia. Platelets are thrombocytes. So what we do is we get the word from um, thrombo, which is here. It's just platelet. You also see the abbreviation PLT. And then cytopenia means low cell. So that's where we get that word from. And what do they look like? Well, in this picture, you can see that this is the thrombocyte right here, the platelet. And then this is a red blood cell. And then this is a white blood cell. And you can see that the uh, platelets are a lot smaller than the red blood cells and the white blood cells. So let's look at how platelets work. Well, platelets are formed from these, things, these cells called megakaryocytes. And this is your megakaryocyte. It's your nucleus. And then they have like these little appendages they, that they have, and they break off these little platelets. So these are your platelets right here. And uh, a megakaryocyte can actually produce anywhere from 1,000 to 3,000 platelets during its lifetime. And they're all derived from the bone marrow. Now, the way platelets work is that if you have an injury at a site, so if it's right here, what happens is uh, that could be like a laceration or some sort of trauma. But what happens is the collagen in the skin triggers the reaction that stimulates the platelets to come to the site. So the P is the platelets. And normally platelets are these flat round cells right here. But what happens is when they're activated, they grow these little appendages right here, little arms. So think of them as like sticky fingers. And that makes them adhere to the uh, to their whatever site they're going to a little bit better. Now, the entire clotting cascade is very, very complicated. And there are a lot of factors that play into it. But what you need to know is that platelets arrive to the site and they stick to the injury. And that triggers more of this response. So in this animation, you can see the that the platelets come and then uh, the little L's are the response. So they trigger more, they trigger more platelets to come. And uh, they all start to clump together to form this little clot. And then the platelets also interact with a substance called fibrin. And that'll create a, a clot at the site. And that's what actually stops the bleeding. So what do you need to consider whenever you're drawing your blood samples? Well, just know that your platelet samples are going to be submitted in a lavender top tube with the EDTA and that has your anti-clotting um, preservative in, uh, in it. And it's gonna be submitted commonly with the CBC. So that's gonna look at your white blood cells, your red blood cells, uh, maybe your hemoglobin and your hematocrit. So just know that it's all part of that big CBC. So the next question you're asking is, what happens if we have high and low values of, uh, of Platelets. Well, with elevated platelets, you have a condition called a thrombocytosis. And that's when the platelets are greater than uh, 400,000 cells per microliter. And conditions that trigger this are going to be things like cancer or malignancy. Another situation is the absence of a spleen. A spleen's responsibility is they, uh, they break down the old uh, or damaged platelets. And if there's no spleen, that can occur, and therefore your platelet values go up. Certain types of birth control will actually increase the amount of platelets, and that's uh, and that's what cause, uh, causes those those values to go up. And another condition that you may see this is is polycythemia vera. We've talked about this in some other uh, lessons, and basically what it is is it's it's an uncommon type of bone marrow cancer, and it causes this massive overproduction of cells. And This isn't. This also includes things like your white blood cells, your red blood cells, which in turn uh, affect hemoglobin and hematocrit. And what they do for treatment is they use uh, it's called bloodletting, or this is the actual removal of blood from a patient f through vlo uh, phlebotomy to actually decrease the overall blood volume. The blood becomes really thick and viscous as an overproduction of these cells, and that's how they treat it. It can also be treated through making sure the patient is adequately hydrated and some medications can help to uh, improve the condition. What happens if the platelets are low? Well, this is a condition called thrombocytopenia, so you have decreased platelets. There are a couple conditions. One is called ITP or idiopathic thrombocytopenia purpura. And what it is is it's an autoimmune disease that attacks the antibodies on the platelets and destroy them, destroys them. So if you don't have platelets, you can't clot. So these patients are at much higher risk of bleeding. 
And patients that have ITP, they'll go through some sort of medication therapy, and that helps to suppress the immune system so that it doesn't attack itself. Um, these these patients are definitely at risk for bleeding, and sometimes they'll, they'll uh, develop these little areas uh, under the skin called petechia or petechiae. And what what these are, they they sometimes look like little uh, bleeding stars or little uh, purplish areas. So if you see that, you might want to suspect that a platelet that there might be a platelet issue with, with your patient. Another condition you're going to see decreased platelets in is uh, obviously some sort of hemorrhage. And uh, with those patients, you're going to give them platelet transfusions. Pla uh, patients that are undergoing chemo or radiation for leukemia will also have decreased platelets. And another thing you want to consider is medications. Certain medications have the potential to decrease platelet production. These are going to be things like certain diuretics, some non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, ranitidine, and some sort, some antibiotics. Uh, so be sure to review any of your medications that you're suspicious of if they, they, they might have a clotting issue for your patient. So our nursing concepts for this lesson focus on lab values and clotting because that's what the responsibility of platelets are. So let's recap. Normal values for platelets are 100,000 to 400,000 cells per microliter, and the, respons the responsibility of the platelet is for clotting. When you have increased platelets, it could be from different types of cancers, polycythemia vera, or overproduction of those cells. Also consider if the patient has had some sort of splenectomy. If a patient has decreased platelets, this is much more concerning uh, because these are they are going to be at risk for bleeding, but causes of this are gonna be ITP, leukemia, and possible um, hemorrhage. If your patient does have these decreased values, uh, make sure that they understand that they are at risk for the bleeding so that they know when to know know when to come to the emergency room if they have some sort of injury that won't stop bleeding and make sure you go over any medications that could cause bleeding issues that's it for our lesson on platelets make sure you check out all the resources attached to this lesson now go out and be your best selves today and as always happy nursing